Oh, you are filming. <laughs> we are ready for a Todd's Tips. That's right. And it's in color. And Kurt is filming. Mm -hmm. Now, the purpose of this video is actually for a customer who purchased a game from us and the chassis failed. So this is how to remove... Turn the camera up there, thank you. Don't how... alter. Oh, no, Walter takes better videos than that. There's Walter looking at the chassis. Oh, no, 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 you're, you're supposed to light. No, 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 the chassis's over here. Oh. <laughs> you're so mean. Sorry, okay, Walter. okay, listen. This is a 7,000 chassis. You know this, one of my favorite chassis. Wells Garner, one of the die-hard chassis in the world. And their chassis went bad. Actually, we shipped it so far away, brand new flyback, cracked on the inside so we're going to send him another one however to make it easy for him we're going to show you how to take it out so he can watch the video and then you guys are going to learn too now the first thing you're going to do even though the picture tubes are supposed to discharge themselves it's always wise to do it again get an alligator clip or any piece of metal hook it to any part on the chassis that's metal and then under here there we go I'm going to slide it under the cap and touch it. Now, this is so, and this is very important, folks. This is so you don't get a shock. Because, see, if you went up there and did this, it doesn't get old. It doesn't get old. Well, wait, it doesn't get old. It doesn't, oh! I'm dropping everything. My gosh. Anyway, it's discharged now. So we remove that and we're done. Now what I like to do anyway, for good measure, now see, I'm gonna show you, that's just a clip. Very simple affair, it's a little clip and it's a brand new flyback in it. We like putting new flybacks and everything. You can discharge it again. You see how I'm touching it in there? But you see, the nice thing about Wells Gardeners is they are automatically discharging. But you never can be sure. So we do it anyway for good measure. Second part, you unplug the neck board. Now, I want to show you something about neck boards. The little plastic gizmo that covers the, the titty right here, over the years it gets so hot they break off, especially if you're dealing with 10, 15, 20 year old chassis. So notice I removed this. There's no protection for the neck and there's also no guide. When you plug something back on, you're gonna to have to make sure you line it up. Notice there's a single pin all by itself, then there's space on both sides and then the rest of the pins, and the same thing here. Just for your information, that single pin is the focus pin. Without that pin, you would get no focus on your tube. They keep that separate, so you unplug that. Now, there's going to be a return ground to the tube. This is what discharges it when you turn it off. Now, you wanna remove the return ground that's the only time you're gonna actually cut a wire. So we cut the wire off like that, and I'll show you how we'll reconnect it with the other one. That's the return ground. Oddly enough, this model has no pin to slide on. Electrohome had a pin, but Wells Gardner had the wire soldered direct. So it's the only time you have to physically cut something. Now, the next thing you're gonna remove is the two plug degaussing circuit. That's this ring that goes around the tube that, that clears the color, purifies the color when you first turn it on. Then, back here, you're going to unplug the yoke. Now, you'll notice all four pins are intact, but sometimes you're going to run into an arcade game where it's cut in half and there's two pins and then it's broke two separate plugs because somebody broke it apart and that's to reverse the screen. You know why? These two run one coil, these two run another. Now I'll explain. If we were to break this in half and flip these two, the picture on the screen may be upside down, completely upside down. So the, uh, the score would be on the bottom of the screen and then the, the ground would be on the top. And the other two wires turn the picture inside out. So if these two were flipped, your picture would appear to be inside out as though you were watching the screen through a mirror. This is the correct way. But some games you have to do some reversals, especially, think about this, some of these games run through 
a um, mirror. So if you had like a lethal enforcer, then if it wasn't pinned correctly for the game, you'd have to actually cut that. But that's no, not here nor there, as long as yours isn't cut. But whatever you do, you should be aware that you have to plug them in correctly. This one's hard to get wrong, but you could force it. You see, these are separate farther apart, and these are normal spacing. So you couldn't really plug that into that one unless you tried real hard. And believe me, people sometimes, unfortunately, do that. Your next step is to take off the data plug. That's in this corner. So these two plugs are unplugged. They carry the color and the sink. Oh boy, that's untight, isn't it, Kurt? Oh my gosh. Boy, that's, that is a tight plug. Now, let me make a connection. Yes, it's definitely making good. Red, this is your three colors, and that's your sink and return ground. In this case, it uses a different sink. It's very nice that they planned for both positive and negative sinks so you could make adjustments. Technically, the chassis could be used anywhere. Now, these are pins that you should be reheating when you do your rebuild of the monitor. You'll already notice that this chassis already has all new capacitors and already has a new flyback. We've also reheated the resistors which get hot over the years. You have to re reheat those too. Okay, now the last step to remember is the remote board. Now, notice right here it says H positive, H hold, V positive, V size. These wires are going to something called a remote board, which I already have loose. So you could have that up front where your TV is. Do never power the game up or the monitor up unless this is plugged in. You want to make sure that this plug is in and you, it's not loose. If you're sending your chassis out for repair, you have to send this with it. Now, some chassis, the little knobs, these same little knobs are right there on the board. But this is kind of nice when you want to make adjustments in the front. Okay, we're all done unplugging everything except the power plug, which is here. Okay, now the last step is removal of the chassis. Now your chassis is going to be held in by either two quarter inch or two Phillips screws. Just two. That's it. And we're going to pop them out and we will continue on. Okay, let me get a Phillips. Oh, 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 and we take out the two screws and we are done. And we'll get this in a box and on its way. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to do the second part of our video showing how to put a chassis back in. See, now that'll box up very nicely. We'll wrap that in bubble wrap. Ah, the chassis. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, putting it back in is a child's play. A child could do it. Now, because it's out in the open, it's going to be easier for you to plug everything in. There's one, there's two, okay? What's with your light? Oh, it turns on and off automatically. I mean, we're, right. we're in, because this, we're in the day and age where things are like hot to trot. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, Kurt. I don't care. Yeah, come on. I mean, we're trying to shoot this thing for this guy so he can put his thing back together. Hot to try. Hot to try. I don't know where you come up with this stuff, Kurt. Okay. Good. On that side, it's better. Okay. Get her all lined in. Now, here's the data plug. One and two. Make sure you're careful with the pins. Okay. Here's our high voltage. Okay, so we go up here to there. We clip it in. Of course, you want to make sure you do clip it right. Good. Okay, now we're down to the nitty gritty. Now, remember, because we're missing that cap, we want to make sure we line this up and plug her in nice and soundly. Good. Now, remember, you can't get picture tubes anymore. So we have to do these things as we... Now, I already pre-stripped this here. This is our return ground. This is important because this is what discharges the tube. 
so you don't get that spark. Should we do the spark gag again, Kurt? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it again, no. Now, most important, don't forget to put the screws in. Now, I'll tell you why you can't forget this. We actually delivered a game once. Uh, we actually uh, delivered a game once to someone, and the guy forgot to put the screws in, so the chassis had shifted. So when they got to the house, they turned the game on. It was a just like my, and that was the end of the chassis. So you have to remember to put those. Everybody, any, everybody can make a mistake. Picture worked for a second. Yes, everything worked great for a moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Now we're done. Everything's plugged in. Do a quick eyeball check now. We're going to put a chiclet on that too. Uh, or you could put a wire nut, a wire nut's perfect, or you can just tape it if you want, the return ground. But we're, for the sake of getting this video finished, we are simply going to turn the game on using a convenient plug. Oh, I heard the high voltage start up. That's always a good sign. Now, remember the remote's now back here, so we're going to be making our brightness and vertical hold adjustments there. Our master brightness and focus is here, but let's see what we're going to the screen. Ah, a beautiful picture. Now, a little too bright, a hair too bright. So we'll do our final adjustments. You know what? We're gonna need a mirror. Yep. Yes, we are gonna need a mirror. Tell me, is the contrast better? The contrast is good. Turn the main brightness down. Too much. Oh, that's beautiful. Is that good? A little bit down. That's good, and we'll just widen the picture when we get a mirror. We will wide, yes, we will, yeah, we definitely have to widen the picture. Pretty sweet. Good. Nice cap job. Kurt did the caps. Thank you. <laughs> Capacitors are a wonderful thing. Anyway, we thank you for joining Todd's Tips for a 7000 chassis. And keep watching, we've got lots more videos coming. Good night. Now, get lost! <laughs>